Well, Joshua, in fact, this is a theme that during our pastoral activities, you find very often a certain confusion in, regard, in regards to this theme about penance. People don't like to talk about it. There are people who, many people basically because they don't understand what is penance or why is it necessary. Because one question which, which you encounter often is this. Is penance something necessary or something accessory to a Catholic's life? Do all Catholics need to do penance? Uh, Brother John, uh, penance is necessary for a Catholic life. The church is our mother. And as our mother, she obliges us to do penance. That means that it's necessary because a, a good mother wouldn't oblige us to do that. Wouldn't, that would not be necessary. There are two days in the year when we are obliged to do penance. Uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Mm -hmm. that those days we, are, we have to fast. That means we have just to have one meal and two little accessory snacks. Mm -hmm. We are obliged to that. We are also obliged to every Friday in the year to, to abstain from meat. Of course, the bishops' conferences can, can uh, permit you to change that. But you're, you're with some other penance. You have so, to substitute it for, for another penance. penance. Another Why do we need to, need to do penance? Penance, because, um, well, when you, have, when you go for a confession, the priest absolves you. And after he absolves you, he's just pardoned you. God has just pardoned you. And then he gives you a penance. Why do you have penance? Penance because sin affects not only my relationship with God. That's the eternal punishment that I, I, I deserve. That's pardoned by confession. But sin also affects my, my relationship with other human beings, with the order of the universe, because I'm a creature, etc. And that is not pardoned. That temporal punishment is not pardoned by, by confession. I need to purge myself. I need to... Uh, Do something that repairs... That satisfaction. I need to, when you pay that, that delight that I shouldn't have had, I need to put, I set right that, that, that I have wronged. And that I do either in purgatory who I do on this earth with penance. So I need to do penance. And even here on earth, when we, when we do this type of penance, it's actually meritorious still. If we were to pay for it later on in purgatory, we'd still have to pay for it, but without any merit. Um, so it's much better to do it here on earth. Yeah, and besides you could, and whatever you pay over here in pennies, you'd pay over there in pounds. So it's better to do it over here in pennies. Interesting. So this already, helps to sort out ideas, many of the objections which people who don't, people outside the church have against penance, Catholic penance, because it has a role. But uh, sometimes it seems a little bit out of place to talk about penance in our days, because we have to do penance as a debt that we have to pay. I did something wrong, I have to solve it, I have to suffer this. But then Brother Morgan said something interesting, that when I do penance here, on this earth, I gain something out of it, unlike purgatory. So I don't know if both of you can talk a little bit more about this. What do you gain from penance, properly speaking? What are these merits that you mentioned? Or what exactly does penance bring of good to a person who does penance, to a Catholic? Yeah, because I mean, I'll mean, take your question further. You can't, you can't seem like people who, non-Catholics would like Catholics to seem like these uh, people who like to suffer. So yeah, sin and whatever, and you confess, and even then nothing's over. You need to continue yeah. suffering. And, no, that's not it. Penance is much more than that. Penance is, is, is good. It's necessary. It's helpful. It's like when you have a broken hand, uh, you need to set your hand right. You need to put it into a cast so that it might even hurt. But that makes you regain your hand. That's fantastic. That's what penance does. Penance makes you feel good. Like you you were say something. No, and you, I was just thinking a little while you were, you were speaking there initially. Uh, you often have the role of a confessor, uh, but on our part, always, not often. <laughs> we uh, we um, confess. We have to confess. We go to confession. We go to confession, and and something interesting that I was thinking of is when the priest gives us a penance to do. It's and you're you're almost so thankful that you were you were pardoned of all of the sins that you had committed that you do that penance almost out of joy, out of love. But I think one thing that is a little more difficult to do is to do penance in our day-to-day -day lives, not 
to satisfy the, not to make the satisfaction of confession, but to do it day to day because we don't know the value of, of penance. I, I agree with you, Brother, John, Brother Morgan, because uh, besides a, a confessor in, in the sacrament, he can't give you a, a difficult penance. Because, I mean, he wants you to come back to confess again. So he can't tell you, no, you need to walk to Jerusalem. No, you can't do that. <laughs> He'll give you, no, just pray three Hail Marys or you know, something simple. We lived yeah. in the fourth but then, century. Or but then some, you, uh, per, the person, like each individual needs to want, as you said, to do penance for his own sins. Because uh, that, uh, to, to gain the, the benefits that penance that, uh, has for oneself. No. But then, what are these benefits, Father? So that exactly let, the let, let the layman talk first. Let 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 let's hear the lay side of this. No, no, please. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what do you think, Brother Morgan? What you gain when you do a penance? You think you said it's an act of love after confession. But in your daily life, you mentioned that you gain many things out of confession, out of penance, rather. That that helps, but people don't realize that if they knew what they were gaining from penance, they would want to do it more often. Of course. But then, what exactly is this? that people are missing out on? Well, Father Joshua, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but um, i thinking a little. Um, Claudio, of course, penance, uh, we satisfy our sins uh, with penance, but also penance also gives us more strength to not fall back into the same sins. How many times do we go to confession and it almost seems like every week we go to confession, a weekly confession, it's always more or less the same sin. You don't even have to, you can almost bring the same list because you keep falling into that. Now, if we were going to, if we truly understood the, the value of penance, I think that we would fall less into the same sins because we would do penance to, to strengthen our souls and to combat, to, to combat that defect that we have. Our Lord, it, it our Lord fort said that. fortifies us. No? Our Lord said that in the, in the 17th chapter of St. Matthew. He said, uh, he said, certain devils are only cast out by prayer and fasting. Hmm. Prayer is not enough. Some things, whenever, sometimes certain types of sins, you create a, a weakness in relation to that sin, in relation to the devils related to that sin. And those are only cast out by fasting. Penance. Penance, is, penance is, exactly. is one type of penance. So, yes, self-control. You gain, A person gains self-control. If I, mm, I have the habit of drinking too much, I confess, I ask God for pardon, but I, I've created a habit and I need, to I need to create a good habit exactly. with the help of grace, but I need to create a human habit that is the opposite of indulging in drinking. So I need to curb myself, not only in drinking, but if I start curbing myself in other things, I create the habit of dom having dominion over myself. So if I dom dominate myself in the lawful things, it's much more easier for me to con dominate myself in the unlawful things. That's one of the things. Many times we do the first part, we pray, we ask God, please help us so I don't fall into the same sin. And we ask for the grace because we know that without God's grace, we, we can do nothing. But it's like Father Joshua said, it's not enough to pray. We have to do something that mortifies our soul, that strengthens our soul not to fall back into that same sin. And that's, that's what our penance is. That's what penance uh, is. Exactly. Yes. You can't touch our soul. No? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but penance helps us also to recognize our weakness. That's the, the, two, the two days of fasting that the church obliges us are for, basically for that. When a man is a little more hungry, he feels his weakness. That sets our pride down. Uh, so it helps us to feel creatures, that we are, we are, we are contingent beings. We are not omnipotent uh, mm -hmm. gods. So penance has a number of, of, of benefits. Uh, Self-control, uh, this, uh, what else? Mm. And in the world today, many times, uh, we hear the opposite. We hear that uh, that suffering is something evil. Something is su suffering is something bad that, that that shouldn't be permitted in society. So you see, many times society wants to eliminate all types of suffering. And so, for example, even somebody was telling me the other day that there exist um, certain hospitals that there's the hospital, and then in the middle of the hospital there's a shopping center. So there's people that are should be prepared themselves. Many of them may die, may have a bad disease, a bad. Uh, something that unfortunate happened to them, but they put so many distractions, so many things that fulfill their their senses, that give them pleasure. That so even in the middle of the dining, they have a shopping center there in the middle. So in in the role of suffering, 
the role of penance, the role of... The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ is, is greatly misunderstood or not understood. How often even in Catholic uh, ambiences we see the cross that's empty with a risen Jesus and all kinds of stuff. Hold on. The cross is good for us. The cross... We, not, not that we need to suffer or whatever, but when God sends us suffering and certain types of suffering uh, are necessary, are good, they are helpful. If we were, I, sugar is a fantastic thing. I like sugar. I eat sugar. But if I were to only eat sugar, I would destroy my health I, and I, I would not even be eating good food. I need to now and then put other things, even bitter things into my food. Uh, if you're painting a picture, white and light colors are good, but you need those black outlines sometimes, you need shadows. That's part of life. Life is made of shadows and light. You need to have penance and you need to have moments of great joy. Both go together. You can't just be, that, that's not Catholic, just, you know, dark side, no. But also just joy, joy, joy without penance. We are still, we are, we are human beings. We are born in original sin. We tend to forget that we are creatures. We tend to forget that we are weak. We tend to forget that we need, that we are here to battle against the devil, against the world and whatever. So we need penance. We need both sides. In many times, no, sorry, brother John. No, something interesting that you mentioned, Father touched on the subject as well. I found it quite interesting because I'm sure that it comes as something new to many people. Because normally what some may be inclined to think is this, that a Christian, a Catholic has to take care of a soul. We are supposed to go to heaven, but it depends on how our soul lives, not on how our body lives. So, I can do whatever I want with my body, as long as my soul is in the love of God, if I decide to love God. No, that's not Catholic. But then, that's the thing. You heard something interesting about that, which I found very interesting. Hold on, I believe in the resurrection of the body. I'll, be, I'll go to heaven, <laughs> if I do go to heaven, by the grace of our Lady, by the grace of our Lord. By, with my body and my soul. So I need my body and my soul in heaven. Yes. And besides, uh, so I need to train both to be in heaven. Besides, I can't, my soul can't be one thing and my body be another thing. Uh, catechism, holiness, goes together with civilization. It's impossible to sanctify without civilizing. Whenever the church, you take the, the barbarians in Europe or the Indians here in, in the Americas or whatever, the church sanctified them as, they, as she civilized them. If I pray and whatever, but then I live in, I go back home, I pray in church, I receive graces, and then I go back home and I throw myself on the couch and I kick my shoes in one place and I, I go to sleep at any time and I, I eat at any time and I wake up at any time and, and I don't have control of my body, I lose all the graces I had. The body and soul go together. I need to train myself. Interesting. Otherwise, uh, grace doesn't doesn't continue in my soul. So much that Saint Saint Fa Francis, Saint Francis of Assisi, he said that he uh, he would often apologize to his body. Uh, he would say, "I'm sorry that I'm treating you so poorly," but he said, "I treat you this way because I want to be with you in heaven." So, <laughs> you oh, know, that's, that right, that's exactly what you what you were saying. You know, yeah. it's a very interesting outlook on penance, no? Because from the initial idea that the wrong idea that we had was penance was something bad, something which had to be taken as a bitter medicine. But then again, now we are talking about what penance does brings good to us. And even when penance does something, hurts our body, it's so that it can do good to the own body, like St. Francis of Assisi said, and so on and so forth. But then this idea, let's take it for a moment. So penance is something good then, or it could be something good. It can be something very useful for a Catholic's life. No, it is something good. We it is something, that is something always good. Always useful. It's Catholic always life. useful. And that's the point for a Catholic life, because to, for penance to have merit, one needs to be in the state of grace. Only when we are in the grace of God the, our, do our works have merit. If I were to not be in the grace of God, that means if I wasn't baptized, or having been baptized, if I lost the state of grace by mortal sin, I could scourge myself, I could do whatever I want. Those would be human acts. That would not be the acts of someone who participates in God's life, someone in the state of grace. And therefore they would have zero supernatural merit. So I could sit on a, on a bed of nails, a fakir, I could whatever. But if I'm not in the state of grace, I have absolutely no merit. 
But if I did something small, but I'm united to our Lord because of grace, because of the merits of Christ's passion, to which I unite myself, I have a lot of merit. That's why more important than even the works of penance is the way I do penance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what St. Louis says. Uh, most of our viewers have done the consecration to Our Lady. Uh, St. Louis says, St. Louis de Montfort says that Our Lady had more merit when she opened the one door in the house in Nazareth than St. Lawrence on the grill being cooked to death. Why? Because Our Lady had much more grace in her soul and she was full of grace while St. Lawrence was just arriving to sanctity. It's just like you said, it's when we're in the state of the grace, in the, excuse me, it's when we're in the state of grace that we also have the infused theological virtue of charity because true love is love of God. And if we don't do penance out of love for God, what is the value? So without exactly. that exactly. virtue of charity, exactly. that penance that you do has mm -hmm. absolutely no value in relation to eternal life, in relation to heaven, in relation to God. It's something purely human. There's no nowadays, uh, since you spoke about charity, nowadays uh, there are a lot of, most people are bombarded with the idea that they need to do good to other people. So you have charitable work. You often hear the, oh no, because I have a good heart and therefore I'm going to. <laughs> exactly. No, and I, I do this, I give, the, I give arms, I work, whatever. But if you're not in the state of grace, that has zero supernatural merit. You need to have the grace of God, you need to have the infused virtue of charity, and then you have supernatural merit. Then whatever you do, penance, our Lord said, uh, and that's what Lent's all about, prayer, Fasting and almsgiving. Fasting and almsgiving is the penance we'll do. But you need to be in the state of grace. So the first thing, Brother John, I'd recommend <clears throat> as a penance, before penance, is fasting from sin. But fasting from sin has to be not just like, you know, during length. I'm going to fast from sin and then after that I'm going to go back to sin. No, I need to fast from <laughs> sin. Lens yeah, over right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I, celebrate Easter by sinning. I, I need to be in the state of grace always. So the first thing before penance would be about good confession. Perhaps we could, if I don't know if you, we could talk about that the next time. Confession. Confession is very interesting. I'm sure that you as lay people are always curious what goes on over there when I'm not in there. The so the other side. Confession. First thing, confession. Go for a good confession. Confess get into the state of grace, then penance helps you, whatever, to, to be, maintain gain, that state exactly, of grace. Exactly, uh, uh, gain self-control self over yourself or um, correcting your defects. Uh, for example, I cannot see so-and-so without speaking bad about him. I'm a slave of a bad tendency. Hmm. I cannot help myself. I already confessed that so many times. But when every night, when I'm alone, I look at something that I shouldn't do. I'm a slave. I need to do penance to be free. Penance is good. Always good. As long as I'm a state of grace. <laughs> Interesting. What you just said now reminds me of a, a story, a, a story, a fact I read about Saint Basil the Great, the father of the church. Because he once gave the following advice to a slave, a slave, and the a Roman slave. This man was uh, under a very severe master who was not Christian, and he was a Christian. But he said, "We speak so much about freedom, about, about Christian freedom, but how can a slave be a Christian then, since he's not free?" And Saint Basil responded, "Well, what is the most important thing in a man? It's his soul. The man who has control over his soul is free." So if your body is a slave of your master, but if you do what you want with your soul, you're free. And if your rich lord, if your master, he has all the money in the world, but he's incapable of seeing a sinful woman and going after her, he's a slave and you're a free man. It goes very much in line of what you just mentioned, Father. Exactly. Penance makes you free. The world today, uh, many people today in the world get, uh, criticize the Catholic Church and whatever and say that, one of the things they criticize is penance because they're slaves. Yeah. If they knew what, what it was to be free, it would be much easier. The true freedom of the children of God. No? Exactly. But then one thing. So, penance is always good. So then, the more penance I do, the better. If I scourge myself, the better. If I go without food, the point of almost dying, if I have to be taken to the hospital because of penance I do, even better. 
Is that it? Oh, Mr. John, I don't know if it's quite like that. I mean, <laughs> and tell me why. Tell me. Depends. Why. Depends on who you are. Some people. <laughs> yeah, if you're able to do penances like that. No, uh, no, no, no. Uh, hold on. Congratulations. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But, uh, hold in on. that case, we're in the. Hold on. In the first place, you can't overdo it, because we are children of God. Everything that God gives us, gave us in the world, is good. And we do penance to be more free, to be more children of God. So if I start to reject everything, that would almost be uh, Gnosticism, almost be Manichaeanism. Because the finality of penance is to unite ourselves to God. God. Not, not to reject the, 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 the we fall into it. We, let's not get into this, but I mean the, the, the two principles, the good, the good God and the bad God and whatever. So everything that's, that's pleasure in this world, is that's, no, no, that's craziness. That's not Christianity. So I can't do penance. I can't, I can't overdo anything as penance. If I'm overdoing something, that's wrong. Christianity, Catholicism, is all about a filial relationship with God, a sonship with God, and therefore of great equilibrium. If I'm going out of my equilibrium, if I'm doing something crazy, if I'm overdoing something, that's not penance. That's already, I'm either doing that because I want to be in the, in the center. I've... I mean, I you think can be doing penance out of pride to show that, oh, look, I'm doing penance and therefore I'm capable of doing it because I'm strong and I'm this and that. And the love of God. Where's, where's your, you're missing in the, the In the first place, I've, I've, I've separated myself from our Lord Jesus Christ. Penance, as we said, has, has only merit because of union with the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ. If I do it because I'm, I'm going to conquer heaven on my own, hold on. You're not going to do anything on your own. So you can't overdo it. That's in the first place. In the second place, uh, generations have changed. We are no longer in the, the times of St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and much less at the time of St. St. Simon Stylite. Uh, live in a, in a cave or stand on top of a, a, a column for, for 20 years. No one is capable of that. Most people today are not able to do penance because they try to do the wrong type of penances. They pass through a period of conversion, receive graces, go for good confession. I want to be a saint. And then they pick up a book of St. Teresa of Avila or whatever, or St. Saint, Saint Peter of Alcantara. And then I'm going to imitate this life. Hold on. That was in the 16th century. We're in the 21st century. No, St. Peter of Alcantara, if you're going to imitate him. He, for example, he lived in a very cold place. He was from, from Spain. Mm -hmm. Alcantara Spanish. is Spanish. He, um, he was very, very cold. Of course, he, he lived in a cave. He didn't have a bed. He didn't have blankets, covers, anything. And so what was his penance? You could hardly sleep. You would only sleep a couple hours a night, if I'm not Imagine mistaken. Imagine that someone today sleeping for a couple of hours. So what he'd do is he'd go out. He'd go in the snow. He'd get really, really cold. Then he'd go back in the cave. And the cave would almost feel like it was warm in comparison to what it was outside. Oh and this is how he spent night after night. I mean, nowadays... In, 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 the, the, first, in the first place, something if... Like that, if that would be against the law. If you were to give someone, if you were to advise someone to that, you'd be crazy, you'd be going against the law, you'd be doing bad to the person okay. who, you're, who you're, because no one is able to do those kind of penances anymore. But penance is still necessary for us because the main problem, human selfishness, human egoism, putting yourself in the first place, that continues as it was. So you don't need to scourge yourself or sleep in the snow but you can curb yourself the same way uh, with small things, but small things that sometimes hurt worse than bigger things. Just like uh, there's an example of St. Teresa, the child Jesus. Um, she lived in a convent when she was in her convent. There was one sister there who would always kind of get under her nerves. The sister wouldn't even have to speak, wouldn't have to say anything. The fact is that... Um, that St. Teresa was in her presence, her mere presence was enough to kind of just make her want to say something. And so what would she do? What was her penance? Her penance was when she would walk by the sister, she would simply smile at the sister and show that she was conquering those temptations that she was having. And that mere smile was, was her penance. No, that, something that, like that. That, that sister that. thought that she, she was the, her best friend. She thought that St. Teresa liked her the most because she would always smile in a special way. <laughs> oh, my God. And inside, she was like boiling, right? She was... So, yeah, exactly. So, it, it all depends on your intention. The most important thing is the intention. If I do, you mentioned this, if I do penance to appear before others, if I give alms to appear in the parish bulletin, if I, to have people... Uh, to, that's what the Pharisees did. Yeah. 
have a trumpet uh, before you. So intention. If I stop eating, I'm going to eat only bread and water. And I'm going to lose weight with that. <laughs> yeah. You're not doing penance. I'm not going to use the elevator anymore because, no, but it's because I want to be more fit. Not because I want, out of love of God, to yeah. mortify myself. The thing is the virtue of charity. Doing that for the love of God. That's why even if you can't do great things, but you would like to do great things, you could offer your desire to do great things while doing something small, and that would be a super penance. Saint Teresa, of the child Jesus, she would she sometimes, not because of laziness or because of lack of attention or whatever, but she, she was sick and she would fall asleep at choir. And she would say, my Jesus, I offer this to you. I would like to have been awake and sang well, but I didn't. I'm offering my sleep to you. Oh that, that would be a fault. But she did it with so much of love that it's not a fault. It all depends on your love. Depends exactly. There is also another saint, Saint Rosa of Lima, who would do the opposite. She would also fall asleep in the chapel, but she would tie her hair to the the bar that would, it was back here. So every time her head would fall, she'd feel like somebody was pulling her hair, and so she'd wake up. But I mean, there's two. Sixteenth <laughs> century. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, yeah, no. yeah. You could do small things like that. But, uh, but with a lot of love of God, the most important thing is to have a lot of love of God. Lots and lots of love of God. So a good confession, be in the state of grace, love God a lot, and then do whatever you can. That's what St. Augustine says. Amma et quodris fac. Love and do whatever you want. Whatever you do with a lot of love is worthwhile. This is interesting because the example, I don't know, Brother Morgan gave you, give up the elevator with the lift. It's funny because I'm sure many people must be thinking, I don't need to do penance almost because I live on the fifth floor and I don't have an elevator to go up. And then I'm poor, well, I don't, have the, food. I don't like, have the food that I would like to eat. And I already have so many sufferings in my life, but since they're not voluntary, since I can't do them, when, like, when I want to do them, it's imposed on me. I don't have any merit and I have to suffer anyway. What do you have to say about this? Uh, well, in the first place, the best penances we could ever do are not the penances that we choose for ourselves, but the penances that God gives us. Uh, because when we do something that we want to do, we are still doing them because we want to do. The human element st is still there. If I accept God's will for me and I offer up staying on the fifth floor with difficult neighbors and whatever, but offer it up with love of God, not with, you know, uh, 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 sa resignation. No, with, with, with love of God as a penance, one of the best penances. But besides that, I also need to do voluntary penances, small ones Interesting. or big ones, but because it's difficult to accept the involuntary penances if I'm not able to sometimes do voluntary penances, do something, it could be something simple. For example, uh, I don't need, for example, cutting down on, on, on great foods or whatever is perhaps would not be the best thing for, for, for human life. Modern life is very full of agitation. In the traffic, you get tired and whatever. So you can't cut down on food too much. Uh, what you could do is, for example, cut down on things you like. Mm. Uh, you could eat well, but just not you know, the best things that you like to eat. Mm. Or, for example, that's, that's one of my, uh, my favorite suggestions to people. Eat half a dessert. It's much easier to skip a dessert <laughs> than to, to eat to halfway through. To start and not be able to finish, right? And get <laughs> Especially to the, that one that you yeah, really oh, love. That's really good. good. <laughs> that chocolate mousse. Oh. Chocolate mousse with cherries on top. Oh. <laughs> and then leave that large cherry over there. <clears throat> Much more difficult than to abstain completely, no? Interesting. So, Father, from what you're saying, if, if a person who has diabetes and can't eat sugar, well, somebody else has to, doesn't eat sugar during Lent because he doesn't want to. He does a sacrifice. The person who has diabetes, who's obliged to do that, or who has, for any health reason or for whatever reason, is obliged to do some, a penance, if he does that from the love of God, it is as good as somebody who does it voluntarily. No, depends on the amount of love of God. Interesting. But for, some, for a diabetic, the, worst, the best thing would the best thing. Uh, start off with obeying your, 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 your doctor your, your, yeah, as like 100%. And it could actually even be more meritorious for a diabetic to obey completely, uh, say, abstain from food 
then somebody who chooses to do that out of his own will because you, it's something that God gave to that person. No, Father, I don't know if you... More or less, depends on the amount of love, the amount of love of God. But for a diabetic, for example, start obeying 100% what you need me to, to do. What is good for you. Exactly. Then choose something else. But small things. You don't need to... But every little day uh, during Lent, something, you know... And basically the things that you don't like. Because, for example, uh, some people were, have a good Catholic formation. They were trained, trained by their parents. Ah, they, every Lent they would, not eat any, they would not eat meat. So it doesn't cost them to not eat meat the whole of Lent, for example. That's not too much of a penance anymore. Yeah. Penance is when something that costs you. I know people, for example, who don't eat meat in Lent and they tell every single person they meet that they don't eat meat in Lent. That's not penance anymore. That's pharisaism. Man. Exactly. So start by not telling people about yourself. That's one of, that's one of my favorites too. Uh, don't use the word I. Don't use the word me. Sometimes when you have a, a I don't know if someone's done that, done that in a, it just, in the, the system that we have over here, that there must be commentaries or whatever. But if someone has put there, don't forgive me. Uh, some people said, ah, yeah, I, I do such and such thing and I do such and such thing. Who asked you? No one asked you. If people don't ask you, don't put yourself in the middle. I'm sick and tired. <clears throat> I think most people today are sick and tired of other people telling them about themselves. I did this and I did that and I do this and I do that and I am so and so and I whatever and I pray this and I pray that. Sometimes even the confessional, people come there and say, oh, well, well, what would you like to confess? Ah, yeah, but how was your, how, your prayer life? Oh, I pray very well. I pray this and I pray that. And I pray. But uh, do you ever lie? No, no, of course not. I hate lies. And come on, stop speaking of yourself. A good penance would be putting yourself in your own place. Exactly. Listening to other people in your family, listening to other people around you. Try not to say a word when you're not asked. In that sense, Father, uh, if we were to relate to the days of our Lord uh, during his passion, it appears that one of the great temptations of, of people in today's life is to be so preoccupied, uh, worried, preoccupied, so worried about their own spiritual life, about their own state of soul, about how they are and what, and they forget about something that's much, much more important, which is how is the church? How is the state of the church? Imagine somebody assisting the passion of our Lord. The passion of our Lord started there on Calvary, and there's somebody at their home who's worried about if they're, if they're doing the right thing and if they're doing this and they're talking about it. But wait a minute, unite yourself to our Lord. Who's, 200 steps on the Sabbath. When I walk 200 steps, wait, our Lord's being crucified. Our Lord's being crucified. In the situation of the church, do, how often do we think about the church, about what's happening, what's this and that? Christians are being massacred in Nigeria, in several other countries. Laws are being passed against the church. Besides persecution from outside, you have scandals within the church. Every single day you have a scandal. And people ask themselves, what's happening? And I'm worried about myself and my personal sanctification, and I forget about the situation of the, of the mystical spouse of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's something wrong. Because I don't know if you agree, Father. Intention. Brother Once again, we get intention. What's my intention? Father Joshua, Brother John. But it seems to me like that one of the other, one other aspect of penance, of course, it does good for our soul. It repairs, uh, it makes up for the, our, our sins of the past. It can even make up for sins of others before God. It can even atone for them. But it seems that it also, um, there's also something more that penance does in a sense that we can unite ourselves to the mystical spouse of our Lord Jesus Christ exactly. and suffer not just for ourselves, but also for the church. And union with the church, which is suffering. St. Paul says that. St. Paul says that I make up in my flesh that which is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Our Lord, He suffered everything for us, but He wants us to unite our sufferings to Him for the salvation of others. That's the, that's the symbolism of the, the, the drop of water that is put into the, the chalice before consecration. Water in itself can't be consecrated, but when it's mixed with the wine, it, makes one, it becomes one liquid with the wine. And that is consecrated. So our human sufferings, our, our penances, united to our Lord, have an effect in the redemption of the world. So I can pray to our Lord for the conversion of my brother, my sister, my wife, my uh, husband or whatever. 
but if I suffer together with that, then my prayers will have value. Thomas said you oblige God to give that grace exactly. to that person. And above all, today, you, how many people suffer for the church? There are many people who work for the church. They have apostolic activities in quantity. Prayers for the victory of the Catholic Church, for the salvation of youth, for that, for that innocence that we preserved, for families. How many people pray? And almost nobody suffers. And we need to you, uh, practice our penances in the, inserted in the time in which we are. We are in the time of, of well, perhaps one of the most important periods in history. The church is passing through a moment and it's the mystical passion of the church, just as the church represented our Lord in the different stages of his life. Today, as Our Lady prophesies in Fatima, we are, we are experiencing the mystical passion of the church. And we need to unite ourselves to the church and offer this to him, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Just as people, uh, he's being offended by so many people outside the church and sometimes inside the church. There are Catholic faithful, mothers, fathers, uh, sons, workers, uh, etc., students, who carry their crosses within the, the, the places where they are called to carry that cross, uniting themselves. That's where the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ also is, is carrying its cross and uniting itself with His passion. That's fantastic, Brother Morgan. Very nice. So this is something really interesting that we're saying now because it gives us a total new outlook on, on suffering, on penance in general, because basically suffering, I'm not suffering anymore. I'm suffering united to our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not like Jesus has His cross and I have my cross. I'm on His cross. I'm together with Him on the same cross, and my sufferings have a supernatural value. But then, this is something very beautiful. But I'm sure many of the people who are watching us now have the following doubt. How do I apply this entirely to my days today, to my daily life? You did mention something, the fact, for example, of somebody who doesn't mention himself, to, does not use the word I, etc. But other types of penances. Other types of penances. Any well, the first one, I think, is abstaining from... As you said, the, the, the cell phone and internet and people waste a lot of time, a lot of time. Even when they are not things that are morally evil, they agitate the soul. And everything that is affin to agitation is affin to, to sin. Because every type of sin causes agitation. And grace, the, uh, the action of the angels, the action of Our Lady, the presence of Our Lady, uh, causes serenity, peace. So abstaining from agitation, above all, the, the, the social communication, whatever. Uh, there's so many, so many news, so much notice. I don't need to know all that. I'll gain a lot of time. I'll have time for my family. I'll sleep better. I'll do good to my nerves. And above all, I'll, have my, I'll be in peace for God to be able to speak to me. Because each one of us has an instinct by which we need to get into contact with others. And this instinct is being suffocated these days by the means of communication. And instead of getting into contact with God, I'm into contact with my cell phone. It's a, it's a vice. People are unable to get into contact. You see sometimes, uh, even a family meeting, the people go together to a restaurant, and in, in, instead of speaking to each other, each one is on their cell phone. Yeah. Uh, come back home, and everyone's sitting on, and looking at the television, and they're unable to speak to each other. No, nowadays, wherever you go, be it the supermarket, uh, the doctor's office, the, there's always a television on. Sometimes we go in, into places, I become shocked, there's nobody there, and the television's on, and it's at full volume. Sometimes I'll ask the receptionist, is it possible, can you please turn down the volume a little, I'm going to pray a little, I'm going to do some reading. But there's nobody in the room, but the television has to be on. One, one, one practical penance, silence. Learn to love silence. Learn to be away from distractions and not just internet and whatever, but other types too. Everything that, that distracts me. Don't live on the roads. Live within my house. That's what interior life is all about. Living with, within oneself. People are probably picking up, but I mean, they're watching us either on their television or on their cell phone. They're probably saying, you know, come on now. <laughs> that, no, that's what I said. That's what I said. I Br Brother, John's, Brother John's podcast is the exception to all rules. <laughs> Well, but it's like you said, there has to be an equilibrium when uh, you should use these things and when you shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the intention, for, for like you work, said. For work or something like that. Another thing is to waste hours watching news that you don't... Absolutely useless. Mm -hmm. watch and not even news, uh, just to an, get a laugh. An, another vice these days, you've mentioned it, a laugh 
trying to be funny, trying to catch the attention of everybody, always having something interesting to say, something funny to say. That's a disease. Stop saying funny things. Life is serious. We are on this earth to conquer heaven. We are always being attacked by the world, the devil and the flesh. People are dying. People are being persecuted all over the world. The church is in a serious state. How often do I think of these great important truths? And how often do I, although I know the existence of these truths, I don't apply them to my life because I live like a fool, laughing all the time. I live a, a superficial epidemic life. I think one of the main reasons, I'm sure you'll agree with me, Father, is that you find so little Christian joy, so little true joy that we find too many people in depression, suicides and all that, is because people don't know to appreciate seriousness. True seriousness brings the Christian joy, brings, brings, joy, real, brings happiness. Brings this, happiness. This ability to contemplate great horizons, to, to understand the mysteries of our faith, to apply them to our times, to understand in profundity what's happening to the world, this gives great peace, great joy, this gives great horizons. It's like, you know, those big eagles that fly at great heights where the air is pure and where the horizon is great. That's fantastic. Living like a chicken, running around on the floor, cat, uh, hunting for worms. And uh, that's, that's not being Christian. That's, yeah. that's, that's below our dignity as ch children of God. Well, Joshua is setting, setting the goal high. Of course, it's not something easy to yeah. put into practice night to day or day to night. Even um, we're all human. We all have temptations. We're all born in original sin. Um, while Father Joshua was talking, I was actually remembering one of the counsels that a priest gave to me one time. Uh, he said, sometimes when you feel like telling a joke or feel like telling something, you receive, you have that temptation to say something fun. He said, think about our Lord. We have a beautiful statue here, here we're in a, a monastery, of our Lord scourged. And so his, all his wounds on his body open. They're all bleeding. It's beautiful, beautiful. Bring this statue to your mind. Start, start remembering the statue. Imagine the statue. And I guarantee you that in seconds, you're, you're going to forget about that joke you wanted to say because you elevated your mind. You started thinking about our Lord's passion, about the situation of the church, about so many other things that you could be thinking of. And that joke naturally is just kind of... I, I, don't, I don't imagine our Lord Jesus Christ walking through Palestine, cracking jokes. Hmm. Our Lord was a monument of... Of majestic of majesty of seriousness everything he said has had great significance even if it was something simple look at the lilies of the field that's a that's almost poetic that is poetic that is poetic but it's not a joke he had things that were, that were enchanting but he didn't crack jokes as often as as people do that's something that you know we could abstain for then of course the the, the common penances above all bear with Difficult people, carry on crosses, food, uh, but don't cut everything. Those, those things that you really like. Uh, yeah, to live a healthy lifestyle is a penance. If you want to, many times... Yeah, but, but not because you want to lead a healthy lifestyle. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You can, uh, many times, I agree that what is good for you, it takes a suffering. You can offer it as an act of love of God. I'm going to do this as an act of love of God, and it does not do bad to my health. Yeah, but many... There's another type of penance as well as also to do something extra. For example, I don't know, half an hour of reading or half an hour. Exactly. Yeah. E exactly. It's, it's for, for, some, for someone who doesn't like to read, reading a serious book could be penance. And it's very, very educational. Someone You could learn a lot. Uh, could form your soul. With exactly. That. Not only spiritual, not only in spiritual life, but culture, history. The, you know, the, it's fantastic. Uh, another thing that's very important. People today pray very little. Pray a little extra. Pray, pray a little, little more. more. Pray exactly. Extra. You normally don't pray. Exactly. Or, even better than that, spend some time in the Blessed Sacrament. In that silence, in that peace. Let that peace of our Lord speak to you. Someone would say, that's not a penance. Yes, it's not a penance. For those who know how to enjoy our Lord's presence. But for those who are agitated, mm -hmm. after the first 10 minutes, that becomes a terrible penance. You want to run away. You're unable to sit over there. Sit over there. Tell our Lord how your day was. Uh, or just say nothing. But that could be terribly excruciating for several people. Just to, you have nothing. Exactly. Be there with our Lord. That could be a fantastic Like thing. you mentioned in the beginning, penance is something corrective. Penance is something uh, which helps, clears the soul. Now in this case, the, 
the person over time, over time when he gets used to sitting before the blessed sacraments apple, at one point he starts enjoying it, he starts liking the thing. So in this sense, something which starts as a penance, continues having the value of a penance, but Can it stops, joy, right? exactly, stops causing suffering to the person. Mm -hmm. That could end up happening. Exactly. Uh, then uh, what else? The, if you're an agitated person, do things that, that make you calm. If you like to sit on your own and be with yourself and think of yourself, get out, do a postulate. <laughs> Go help someone, visit a hospital. One of the best things you could do is to get some miraculous medals, some little pictures of Our Lady, and visit people in a hospital. That does a lot of good to people and does a lot of good to yourself. You talked about going out, Father. I think another uh, something very common in our days as well is people sometimes are afraid to show that they are Catholic. Or they want to almost hide that they're Catholic because they're shameful of being a Catholic. And, and many times this human respect uh, creates deep roots in our soul. What would be a type of penance that you could do to... Uh, that, you, you touch a really fundamental point. Going ag against human respect is perhaps one of the most difficult, is the most difficult penance that you could practice these days. Because the world itself as a whole is hostile to Catholicism. And to stand up for your faith, to, for example, make a sign of the cross in a public place, in an airport, Pray in a restaurant, a restaurant, in a restaurant, doing that, but make a big sign of the cross. Because if, if, if other people can go ahead with a, a ring in their ears, in their nose, uh, with spiked hair, with, with going around with all kinds of stuff, and you don't have the courage to say, I'm a child of God. God died for me on the cross in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Mm. Then you're a slave of what other people think of you. Do that, parents. That I would consider. If someone really went against human respect, that would apply above all to all the two younger people because of the instinct of sociability. sociability. Yeah. How many times our founder, Monsieur Juan, he would tell us that many people would rather go to war, they would rather die than saying that they were afraid to go to war. They would do it not out of love, or out of love for the country, out of love for some ideal, but they would do it out of mere human respect. Because of that instinct of sociability, it's almost greater than our instinct of conservation. So to do something like this is... To go against human respect these days is one of the greatest penances you could ever do. That's one, because when, our, when the church is being persecuted, when the church is being uh, silenced, for someone to say, I'm a son of the church, if you want to persecute me, go ahead and persecute me, but I'm, I belong to our Lord Jesus Christ, that is a fantastic penance. One more. What else? I think the, the list is pretty good. Yeah, I think the list is... <laughs> now, I think one thing we have to mention, Father, is the importance of prayer and all this, because I think nobody has an illusion, at least I hope that none of us have an illusion about ourselves, that we can do anything, any one of this by ourselves. We need to... We need God's grace. We need God's grace. We need to pray, asking for this grace. And I really hope that all those who watched us today, who have joined us today for this podcast, have been able to benefit from this, from this conversation. Because if, if it did go to your soul, pray, ask for strength to go forward. Spread the word, uh, spread this video to others. So that just that, it did, just that it did good to you, it can do good to others as well. And Father, you give me an idea for next week's podcast. What do you think? Let's offer it, let's ask the people. Let's try doing next week's podcast on confession. With a priest who attends confession. <laughs> And but but how, what's this? I'm going to be the only, only person talking, or are the other people? No, you'll find out next week, Father. <laughs> but let's leave. It's a fantastic subject, confession. So let's mark it for next week. Next week, join us for a podcast on confession. And thank you once again for joining us this week. And I really hope that this has been useful for all of us. Father, can you give us a blessing so that we can end? Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Maria. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.